In this video, I'm going to show you how to draw black wavy fur and share with you some tips for how you can get your fur looking realistic. Now, the first thing when it comes to drawing wavy fur in general, not just black wavy fur, is that you need to get yourself in a mindset to try and identify and just look at your drawing and maybe if you're using a reference photo look at your reference photo in terms of what shapes you're seeing for the three categories of light which would be the highlights the midtones and the shadows being able to see your drawing in this way is really going to benefit you through the entire drawing process because essentially what makes uh, wavy fur look realistic is getting that into your mind that what you're seeing is shapes and you need to put in each individual section of different types of shapes. And then when you get them all in there together, the end result is that realistic looking fur. The first step I'm taking in drawing this black wavy fur is using a black pencil to go over all of my sketch marks because as I start filling in what I'm going to be calling the base layer, which is going to be the highlights for the fur, I want to make sure I have all of those sketch lines to indicate where some of those shadows are so that they don't end up blurring in to all of the layers that I add for that base layer, which can often happen. So it's kind of an important step to make sure as you're going through your drawing process that you try to make sure you scope out where your sketches are or places that you want to kind of keep in mind as you're going through the drawing process so that you don't lose them with all of those colors you add in as you go. So I'm just adding some layers here of some light ultramarine and some deaf blue to make sure that there's enough of a lighter blue cast to this fur. So now what I am doing is taking a more on the blue spectrum of blues so it's not got a lot of red in it. I'm taking this color and adding it in for some of those, I would say almost mid-tone values in terms of shadowing. And the reason why I want to do this is because it's kind of part of the process anyways, but it's also going to help me identify where some of those more mid-tonal shapes are. Because if you look at this in terms of what I said at the beginning, is that you need to think of this all in terms of shapes and where to put them, the different kinds of shapes for each of the light levels, the highlights, the mid-tones, and the shadows. And so these are some of, not all, of the shapes for my mid-tones. So now I'm going to go ahead and blend all of this out using odorless mineral spirits and a watercolor brush. This is going to pretty much kind of permanently set these colors into the paper. So as I go through my later drawing process, which is going to be really important in trying to create realistic looking wavy fur, it's important to have this step of blending things into the paper. Now you don't necessarily have to use solvent to blend your colored pencils with in order for this technique to be a success. However, it is drastically going to make a difference if you use solvent to blend with versus not using any solvent and you just do burnish blending. Because when we get to the later step in the drawing process where I am using a slice tool to scrape off the top layer of colored pencil to help create some fur details, or in this case, I guess it's fur and hair, right? <laughs> well, anyways, but it is going to help out because the initial base layer has kind of set into the paper, so then it can't really be scraped off. And this helps because now you can kind of have a set color to be the color underneath the top layer. So when you scrape off that top layer, you are revealing the color that you have underneath. Whereas if you don't use solvent to blend with and you're just doing burnish blending, you get all of those layers built up and then when you go to scrape off your top layer to try and create some of those uh, hair details, you're gonna end up scraping off all of the layers and you're gonna be just having white underneath. Now, when I say white though, you're not going to have it be as stark white as just the untouched white paper. It will have a bit of pigment to it, but it's not going to be the effect that you would get if you had blended in a base layer with solvent first. So now that I have allowed at least 15 minutes of time for that layer to dry, I am using black to go over all of my shadow areas. It's important to try and get some really dark values into your drawing, kind of almost in the beginning of the drawing process. So that way you have 
the lightest areas and the darkest areas, which will help you kind of judge better accuracy on all of the other values in between. So basically all your different levels of your midtones and some of those lighter shadows and some of those um, darker highlights. So now keeping in mind what I said at the beginning of this video, again, about shapes, I am doing a bunch of strokes trying to build in some of these really dark shadows. And you'll notice that I'm not doing a whole bunch of individual hairs. That is really key and important in it looking realistic is that I am more focused on trying to get the overall shape and the gradient effects that are going on with all of these different strips and waves that kind of um, connect together. And it's important to not do individual hairs because that is going to make it look like straw. It's not going to look realistic. Really quickly, this is just a sped up version of my real-time fur tutorial over on my Patreon. The real-time version is packed with tips and explanations about a lot more than I do in just this video, giving a more in-depth explanation of the processes going on, and there is two more fur types covered. You can sign up for this tutorial and get access to loads more tutorials for as little as $5 where the tutorials also come with a color sheet for the colors used in the tutorial and a reference photo for you to use. Sign up at patreon.com slash Jessica Matheny. All right, now back to this quick tutorial. You can see that I am just slowly building up some of those shadow values for the fur strips of different shadow shapes. And what's important to note is that I'm only adding this black because that is the darkest value, of course, for the shadows. I'm only adding this where it's absolutely necessary. I am not putting any of this where there are going to be midtones at this point because I want to make sure that I have room to add those in later without making any mistakes. If I were to start adding in black, say, as I probably will in the end for trying to cover up some of the midtones and darken them, I don't want to do that at this point because then I'd have mistakes that I'd have to correct and trying to get the values done later. Merely adding the black in at this point is just to help me with those midtones as I draw them in right after this step. So now that I am done adding in the black, of course, the darkest value for the fur, I'm going to start adding in some of those midtones. To do that, I'm going to use a darker cold gray color and I'm going to start doing kind of like I did with the black, just trying to focus on drawing overall gradient types of shapes. So my first initial attempt with this is to put it down where I'm seeing those midtone values at to kind of get them a little darker. Then I'll go back over a lot of those areas to add more and kind of darken more of those midtone values in the areas that need it to be darker than that first initial layer that I added. Then comes the step of adding some more of that blue color to some of those midtone values, and as well as building up, of course, those midtone values into some of the darker shadow values. Now what I'm doing is taking a lighter gray color and adding this over the top of a lot of those areas where I have highlights, of course, and then some of the areas of the midtones. This is to kind of blend some of that together by burnishing, as well as I'm also taking down some of those highlighted values. So maybe my highlights weren't quite as dark as they needed to be, which is a good thing. That way they weren't too dark to begin with and I'm stuck with trying to lighten them. Instead, it's much easier to add darker colors over the top to darken darken them out. And now I am just adding some more blue to those highlighted sections, making sure I have enough blue color in there. Now, depending on the whiting for your reference photo, in this case, um, it, it is a dog's ear, I think. Uh, but depending on the lighting, the time of day and all that, and then um, the different types of exposure you can do as well as white balance for your photos, you can come out with a lot of different color changes between what 
colors the fur might have in them. There may be some instances where it's a little bit more blue. There may be some instances where it looks a little more on the purple side. And then of course there are some instances maybe kind of more in the early morning or evening light when the colors may look a little more yellow. Overall, the important thing with your fur looking realistic isn't the necessarily the colors that are in it, it's getting those values right. Part of getting the values right though is using the appropriate colors that have the appropriate values, but overall making sure in this case for this fur type, using those grays to try and get those values right. So now I am going to work in more of those shadows because I feel like I have enough of the midtones built up. Now I want to start increasing where those shadow bounds are at and try and get the shadows to be more accurate. So all of the areas that need to be really, really dark, I'm going to darken all of that out. And then of course, I'm going to be using black to start adding in some of those uh, kind of more of the lighter shadows using black over the top of my mid-tone areas to darken things out that need to be darkened. Now, so I'm moving on to the next step, which I mentioned earlier in this video about using a slice tool to scrape off the top layer to help create some fur details. Now, it's important to note that in order for this to work effectively, not only should you be using solvent to blend with, you should also be up to this point in the drying process for it to work out correctly. If you don't have enough of your shadow values built up to do this, you will end up with something that doesn't look so realistic. You really do have to have those shadows be 100% as dark as they need to be and in the places that they need to be, or at least I would say you could get away with maybe 90%, but really it's better to have it 100% because then all you have to do is scrape off that top layer and you have very little work to adjust the values for anything else to with your drawing afterwards. Whereas if you kind of do it at the 90%, maybe you need to still darken some areas, then you're left with, you've scraped everything off and now you have to try and draw around your scrape off hairs and try and preserve them and don't end up covering them up and then having to redo the whole process. So it's just a lot easier if you just take the time to get those values in, get them dark and then do your scraping. The purpose of scraping is to not only create those uh, flighty hairs that kind of go all over, but really also what you're doing is scraping off the top layer for your mid-tones and creating some of those really necessary highlights. In order for your drawing to look realistic, or in this case your fur to look realistic, you need to have appropriate values. That means you need to have very accurate highlights, very accurate mid-tones, and very accurate shadows. So you need to be scraping off some of those mid-tone values to create some highlights, and this is going to help you do that. And the bonus to this is it's also going to be like you're drawing actual hairs. So it's going to give you a realistic look in some of those strippy kind of multi, I wouldn't say individual hair marks, but some of it will kind of look that way, which will give you a realistic result. Because in some areas of your wavy fur, you are going to see a little bit of those um, individual hairs in some of those wavy strips. Not a whole lot, but some. Just an indication that there are some individual strands there. Mostly though, you're just going to be seeing those individual strands that are kind of flighting off into other strips and not so much the individual hairs in the actual strips themselves. So now what I'm doing is adding in the highlights, of course, using a white. This is not really to lighten things up. I mean, it kind of does, but what I'm also doing is trying to soften everything out. I don't always want to have to use odorless mineral spirits to blend with, especially when I'm working with fur that's got a lot of black in it, because it's very easy to end up accidentally getting some of your brush in the black and then smearing it into places that you don't want it to be. So in instances like this, I usually opt for doing a burnish method to softening out those strips by using white or a lighter color to kind of blend and soften them together. And now I am just using one of my darker gray colors to adjust those mid-tone values and make sure that I have enough of 
a buildup of some of those kind of shifting gradients between all of the different strips that are overlapping each other. And then for the final time, I'm going to use a very sharp black pencil and add in some of those darker values where they need to be. And I'm going to be using white and adjusting some of my highlights. When it comes to drawing realistic fur, it can take a lot of practice to get it right. You can learn how to draw highly detailed realistic drawings from my real-time tutorial videos on Patreon for as little as $5 a month. Sign up to get instant access to a growing library with new ones added each month. A link is in the video description. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.